Little bit. Portuguese. Yeah. Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Boa tarde. A todos e a todas. Uh, é um grande prazer apresentar o professor Badru Khan. Era professor na Universidade de Washington e é uma pessoa que tem um conhecimento sólido em relação ao e-learning. Desenvolveu o seu próprio modelo e tem vários referenciais teóricos. Uh, tem estudado esta temática de há 25 anos, 30 anos a esta parte. E, e, e é um grande prazer receber uma Universidade de Aveiro. Vamos então assistir à palestra do professor Badru. Badru, very welcome. Thank you. I just introduced you in Portuguese. But you just say one word in English. Okay. I don't know what you said in Portuguese. Very welcome. Okay. I said that you are you are. Can I trust her? What's this a good thing? Of course you can trust me. Yes. I said you are a professor in Washington University. George Washington. Yes, George Washington University. And I said that you have very solid knowledge about e-learning. I know about you that. developed your own model and you are working in this field for the, the last 25, 30 years. You have lots of uh, theoretical framework and you are a very uh, nice man. strong person in this field and very nice man as well. And it is a very, very good, uh, very, very high, uh, great pleasure to have you. She was good. She is very good. At the me. University in Aveiro, but in Portugal, we give two kisses. Yeah. One. Oh, two. good. Sorry, you, sorry. I'm sorry you're not getting it. I'm getting it. Thank you. <laughs> She's very nice. Well, uh, well thank you. Uh, my name is Badrul Khan. Uh, I am originally from Bangladesh, Chittagong, Bangladesh. And Chittagong has the heritage of Portuguese being there many years ago, Vasco da Gama. But this is a pleasure. You know, ICM that invited me for this keynote. And in 2001, I, uh, sub, uh, my article, What is Web Business Instruction? It came on into the EMI journal, educational, uh, their EMI journal in 2000. So I'm so happy that Sister Anna, Anna Loreiro, and Dina Rosa, they have been so good to me, and I feel like home. And my wife keeps asking me if everything is okay, I say, as if she can do anything, but I say I'm very well taken care of. Okay. So uh, today's topic is learning in the new normal. And you could, you, oh, who, do you have that? Yeah, can yes. you please? Next slide. Yeah, so that's me, Badrul Khan. And as I put that in, okay. All right, you know, you can sense it that because of the COVID, the COVID came, has, anything i heard you and has anything changed suppose COVID changed the whole world we are not talking about learning theory in instruction and all this we need to think about there was a big thing happened people have changed when people have changed it has effect on us effect on Students effect on everyone's life. So that is the COVID is doing to the world. You see, well, this is what happened. If you were in, if you left the world in 2019 and decided to live in the space and you came back in 2022, you see things have changed. People are wearing masks. Kids are not in school, they are home. People ordering things online. People stay six feet distance from each other. And if someone coughing, you stay away. So whole world, whole livelihood has changed. So I would like you to see the COVID-19 has changed the world. Now, those who were interested in regular instructional design and educational design, I would like you to think about 
what happened to the world. You're thinking that you can teach the way you thought before, because after Second World War, there was a new normal. Things have changed. After COVID-19, the whole world has changed. But you don't see it because you are living with us. But if you are in a space and you come back and you see your mom wearing mask, your kids wearing mask, your relative wearing mask, they're staying away from you, you're too close, you're coughing, someone is done away. So what happens? This is the situation. Within this situation, what would you do to take care of your students or the people that you serve? Can you do the business the way you used to do? I doubt about that. So what do you see after COVID-19? You see mask, mask. So this has changed. Now you're not wearing masks because vaccine came, nobody's getting effect, but this is a lesson for us. When I was in different countries talking about web-based instruction in e-learning, People doubt it. Oh, who this gonna work or something? After the COVID happened, they don't challenge me. They say, Badrul, will you be able to participate in a webinar? We just want to see how we can start using online. So because COVID may be a blessing for our field, but is devastated our economy, devastated our livelihood, scare held the heart of many people, and also we lost a lot of people. I understand that, but it also helped that people have the realization is that you no longer can do the business they always used to. I know many of you are professors. Professors, don't take me wrong, we try to be more focused on what we know, what we research, but we don't know when something hit and how to get ourselves to prepare ourselves to help who we serve. Your students are different these days. Their paradigm shift, their mindset has changed. Do you realize it? Don't get me wrong. I think many of you don't realize it because you work based on experiential research. You have to wait. But when things come so fast, you got flat footed, means you're not ready. But my interest is this. I don't even know how we're going to do the business, but I know one thing. COVID-19 has changed the whole world. It has implication in the field of education and training. Do you all agree? So you cannot do the, uh, do the educational services to students who are already affected and they have a different needs. So you can say that you have the new normal in education training. We call it new normal. Someone from Brazil came uh, in the conference, asked me what is new normal means. To me, new normal means things happen. We are wearing masks. We are staying from each other when it's needed. We are shopping online, learning remote. So this become a normal, it's a new normal as simple as it is. And why are you thinking of new normal? What you have done? You have done nothing wrong. It just, it happened to be a situation. You think the war in Ukraine, Russia and others, there might be some other things will change in their life. So you as an educator, since you don't have advanced training of ever changing the world, so I cannot blame you whether you're not ready, but having an understanding when something changes and the person or the people that you support as your job as a professor and teacher so realize that these changes have implication on people having that is good enough not that you will be able to do certain things the way you want to do but also make sure that whatever you do has to be sustainable 
sustainable education development, how can you do in ever-changing world? You just have to be open-minded. You have to understand that things changes and you'll be able to do your best. So today what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share with you things that I believe uh, will be useful to you. So go on, please. So when you got stuck in COVID-19, I was in Washington, DC, Springfield, Virginia, that's where I live. And I couldn't go anywhere. Last time before COVID, I was in West Bank, Israel, Palestine, speaking to six different universities. And then I got stuck at home. So I was thinking, what can I do? But I wanted to know, I want to go to the learners, what they need that I can help with. So we did international webinar. I have a professor from Harvard, my friend is Didi. I have elementary students from USA, the middle school, kindergartner, high school, even a student from Bangladesh where I'm from. And there are other countries involved who ask the question. We wanted to know, and they're doing online courses. We wanted to know what is it that we can do for you. We went to them. And when I hear from them. I hear they're talking about, and I put them in here. Can you press? I see that learners need these eight categories. Environment. They want, please click, engaging, interactive. Whatever you do, it has to be very interactive, very engaging. Device independent. You see, device independent means they can learn the learning either from computer or using a cell phone or listening to TV. So device independent means anything that works. Doesn't have to be one specific uh, computers or TV that you need to use. No, it has to be device independent. That's what the student says. They want usable and accessible. This meaning that whatever you give them, they should be able to use them. They should be accessible. Accessible, for example, in the United States, we have a Section 508, which is like uh, American Disability Act, where a person with different abilities, blind, hard of hearing, so you provide such a way they can participate. It has to be accessible. This one is important. I was talking to a rector and my friend here with the uh, technology center that single objective focused, meaning that suppose you have an umbrella, you are designer holding the umbrella. So each spoke of the umbrella, if you consider them as learning objectives. So goal is a big thing. The goal of the umbrella is to protect you from sunshine or rain. But each spoke of the umbrella could be considered learning objectives. So if you're teaching a course, you need to identify what is the goal. Goal is like a purpose. And then how many objectives you need to complete that course. So you need to identify as many necessary objectives you need. Then you have to sequence them, which one should be taught first. So they want, because they're busy people these days, too many digital transformation going on. The kids and the students are busy, walking, watching Facebook, Instagram. So you need to find your, to enter into, your, into their busy, unnecessary life. Because you need to teach them, because they are already distracted, multitasking. So you, best way to do is to single objective focused. If you have like 30 objectives, but create lesson for only one objective and make sure they can learn and it will take less time. Then you have, when you have this, then it becomes short duration. You know, children and the students these days, even ourselves too, 
We don't want to be lectured like hours and hours. We just wanted to get something quick and learn from me. So short duration, it brings the attention because attention span is very bad these days because of all the multitasking, all the digital disturbances. So you want to make sure if it's short and sweet and targeted, they pay attention. Do I, do I make sense to you? But it's not my talk. I, I, I'm bringing what uh, students are saying. And then you see, my lips are a bit dry, sorry. So short duration is the one you can ask something called, you see the book came out. This is a award-winning book, just came I guess last year or this year, I don't remember. This is called micro learning. So those of you are not seeing me on, the, seeing on my back, here you go. <laughs> micro learning. And all my books are listed in badrulkhan.com. So this is the book is micro learning. So this shows that book did very well and universities are showing interest in micro learning. Micro learning with the short duration, retention boosting and just in time. They get it and if they remember it. If you talk too much, they will lose focus. But if you talk one thing with good technique, for example, thumbs up in the United States means way to go. When I was in Bangladesh, and those days I was playing cricket, you know, there's a game, you know, cricket. So when they uh, bowled me out, means I'm out. So uh, our friends would say like this, you know, it's a derogatory. So if I teach you thumbs up, you will remember, you see, if I do a question by American professor answer, uh, ask me who is the president of the United States, I will say Biden. So the computer will give me thumbs up. So if I, didn't know thumbs up means way to go, congratulations. In Bangladesh, it's a derogatory those days, right? So I would probably break the computer. You see, that means that is a simple thing, a simple icon. It's retention boost. You'll remember, always remember this. So come up with strategies that it sticks to their mind. They can remember. Then come independent by part of the whole, meaning that Remember I told you that your course, you have a goal. Goal of the course, whatever that could be agronomy or it could be technology or it could be history or psychology, but any course has a purpose, which is goal. And then each purpose or goal have performance objectives. So objectives should be organized such a way. If we have to someone do the multiplication or division, they must do subtraction and addition, correct? So how to add, how to subtract, and then you can build up. So in your course, you need to identify, this is very important. This is where the instruction design comes. Very important that many of our professors, even the United States, they don't know. They are professor in psychology or professor in medicine. They will say, okay, this I wanna teach. But they don't know one thing. The students like to have these steps, you know, like Bloom's sexual steps. So you first identify which is the lowest, lowest uh, uh, performance objective you can identify, then move on to the next. So if you're teaching someone how to do sub uh, division or multiplication, make sure they know how to add and subtract. Do I make sense to you? So for your subject, you identify and sequence these objectives with the period acquisition. So you do good work. And this is independent part of the whole means, if you design one lesson, one micro learning, make sure that it is a part of the whole thing, whole course. So look and feel should be good. Don't wanna show one uh, learning objectives, you created a program, is different than the other one. No, the student wouldn't like, they want to see the look and feel same, so they can get, don't get lost. So make sure when you're doing the course, any single micro learning, 
single unit of instruction they're doing, they are part of the course. Follow me? Okay. I want to challenge me so that I can help you. Cost effective, they want cheap, cost effective. Otherwise, they will not take it. So, okay, good. good. They can see my, uh, yes. okay. Another push? Huh? Another click? Yeah. Okay, now, so those eight categories I show you, this is what we did globally as the student. So what we hear and learn, so we put them into eight categories they need. They need this thing. They need something very engaging, any device they can use, they can easily access to it, as the objectives are well determined, and then short duration, it can, they can remember it, and it's cost effective. These are what they want. Now the question is, can you go back one time? Go back one time. Go back. Okay. All right. So there's a question. Now, this is fine. This is the one. But what kind of guidelines we can give? So I will give a magazine to, this is a Union Technology Magazine. It's our premier magazine. And it has this framework. Based on this framework, the, I will show you, these are the guidelines, you know? So we will talk about the guidelines. So what I did, I do, did the research, finding what the students want. I didn't know this before. Then what are the guidelines? So <laughs> if the guidelines are this, same as you see, so these are the guidelines. So anyway, so in the new normal learning, we have the students wants this, and we have these guidelines. So let me talk about the guidelines. When I was a professor at the University of Texas, and my book, Web Based in Instruction, came in 1997, one of the best sellers. But I thought I was very happy, I was very unhappy, because people throughout the world asking me the question, what is web-based instruction? Show me an example. In 1996, no one using the web for instruction. Excuse me. This guy calling from Bangladesh. Because they don't see, this is how the life, life is like. They think you're always in Facebook. They think you can always talk to them. This is gonna be also, you have to think about it. So, I was thinking, if I, this is 1996 in Brownsville, University of Texas, Brownsville, which I was the founding director of that graduate program. I said, people are driving me crazy of that book. Book did very well. 350 universities adopted this book. I don't know if whether you guys use it, but uh, this is web-based instruction, first of its kind. But I couldn't give them the example of a course Nobody was doing in web-based instruction, any universities, no universities. They had web-based information. IBM, big companies has their website, that's all. Those are informational sites. For a site to be instructional, it has to be based on what I told you, the instructional design based on learning theory, pedagogical principles. It has to be very sustainable for the learners learning that it sticks. So what I find, and I'm thinking, actually I was playing basketball with the high school kids in Texas, and I got into argument, then I come home. I said, maybe I get the answer. Since I cannot tell them what to do, cannot show them a course, I did not even develop a course. So I said, okay, what if I send one of my students from Brownsville, Texas, University of Texas, to Amazon Forest, who is not close to, any culture, then how you design for him? Then I said thinking, where in the world? He will say that, where is the library? He will say that, where is my teacher? How will I be connected? 
So you're asking so many questions in my mind, and I've been talking globally in different countries after the book did so well. People asking me, why you do the assessment? And the, the student, he's in a Amazon forest, not close to any culture, any civilization, but you have to develop the course for him. Then many, many issues came in my brain and mind. People are asking him, talking to the people. Then I found somebody asking about the, will there be a course like a syllabus that is pedagogical? So I put that in pedagogical. Someone would ask that, will teacher interact with me in discussion? That are pedagogical, pedagogical issues. So you see, you, I put the learner at the center, keep asking, so thinking about what they need, I found pedagogical. Technological, they will say, will I have access to the internet all the time? That's technological question. You see, so you, can you follow me? I did not do this framework based on what I think. I did this framework because I got stuck, because I did this best-selling book. People are asking me questions. Can you show me an example of web-based instruction? This is 96. And then interface design. Interface design, see, in the computer, what you have is a small screen. Now is a cell phone. In that screen, they are interacting with the content. And what you show in there is that all they have. So you need to do good interface design, what you put, what picture you put. Like a thumbs up, I said, is a cross-cultural problem. So you have to say it. So you have to select things. See, you're thinking you're today in a video. Maybe one of your course will go to Bangladesh. So if the student taking your course not coming here, so what would happen? that what are the sign and symbols that you use in the course, he may or may not understand it, or may take it differently. Think about China, red color. I went to Tsinghua University, and I see red color. We in America use the red color to say something dangerous, right? But red color is very vibrating in China. So that's called culture, right? So you have to think through it. So interface design, you have to, those of you are online, you probably see my back. It's not very pretty back anyway. I got here, my, my hair is off. I should use a pop hat. So, uh, so folks, please forgive me. Um, I hope you can hear me. So you see interface design. Evaluation. What happens to evaluation? We come to the class, traditional way, and our students evaluate us. In, I don't know here, but in America, they evaluate us that whether how well we did. But evaluation in online on blended education is should be very comprehensive. First of all, you have to the assessment assessment of the learners. How do you assess what they have learned? Then evaluation of teachers, professors, evaluation of programmers, evaluation of graphic artists, evaluation of learning management. Administrator means it has to be a very comprehensive evaluation. Why? Because if there is a picture, it's not clear, a video is not very clear, then the students will not like it. So is it the fault of a professor who is teaching it? No. It's probably a fault of designer or who did the graphic design or video scripting, right? So you need to be a very comprehensive evaluator. You know, evaluation of teachers, teaching staff, uh, videographers, audiographer, LMS administrator, and also you probably teaching the course, but someone else did the design. Someone else provide the content. You follow me? So you need to have a comprehensive evaluation. Why are you doing it? That you're doing it because if the photo is bad, then you can always change it. You don't want to be Sage on the stage, guide on, uh, sage on the stage means like uh, you know everything students will learn from you. But be a guide on the side. Give them the resources. Let them learn, but you give them when they need it. Don't just direct it. Don't just keep lecturing them. Ask them, like I'm doing to you. Does, do I make sense? The reason I don't want to go further if you don't understand. So you should not have no place for professor coming and keep lecturing. 
because we have to tell the students, looking in the face, maybe they're not feeling good today. Okay, you take a break or tell a joke. You see, it is have to be interactive. You need to get into their mind. You want them to be satisfied. It's not like a medical science that the surgery, oh, if you don't do it, uh, it's going to be difficult. No, take your time. But depending on the context, but no, no, someone asked me in which country, I don't know, asked me about the question, what should we do? So I said, follow the kids. You know what it means? Follow the kids mean children, they tell you how they're going. You may not like your kids or your grandchildren. They just want to do like this and that. That's how they are. Can you change them? Can you ask your church nephew, nieces, sons, daughters, hey, don't go on Facebook all the time or Instagram? You cannot say that. But it is not controllable. But this is how it is. So what can you do? You need to understand that you need to show them they have to have a program in their mind, their goal, and they have to participate in your instruction. And you may say, there what? The students are students. No, that's one of the things I was trying to tell the rector. I don't believe in universities anymore. I don't, honestly. It's me. And I don't represent any university. There's something called micro credentials. These micro credentials, actually, I'm writing a book of Metaverse. We'll talk later on this. Micro credentials are companies, service uh, community, community who look for people who can give them what they need. Like competency based micro credentials. But university is not going away. But university has to think through that, okay, in this program, is cybersecurity, should I offer the whole program? Or we have to identify what are the most critical needs and how we can provide that through the micro credentials. Okay, just because I don't believe doesn't mean that you should believe the same thing. But we always challenge the world, and I have been doing it in my life. So prove me wrong. You'll see 10 years from now, people talk about, some people are already talking about now. He said, I want, said, I just want this thing to learn. I don't want, if I come to learn about how to protect my Facebook from online, actually my Facebook has been hacked, you know, it's a new one. So that's what I want to learn. So don't give me the history of how the internet came. No, I don't have that time. So uh, <laughs> by the way, don't think that I am really forcing you to change, but I, what I'm telling you, what I feel, I could be wrong. Then you have management. Management dimension is like when you come to the class, you have a blackboard, you have pen, pencil, notebook, you give lecture. But online and blended learning, how you manage information in, uh, distribution, student assessment, all this together is a new management. Your role has to change from deliverer of instruction to manager of one's learning, counselors of one learning, mentor of one's learning, sometimes librarians, sometimes. So you have to play different roles. So you see management of online and blended learning, they have to require you to understand the change of roles. As the university academic affairs ask you, you need to do this, and you are a professor, you are a tenured professor, you say, ah, oh, no, I don't do that. Then you are obsolete into the new universities. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I, the university did not give me money to tell you this. And thank God I'm no longer in the university, they're gonna fire me, right? So, it is true, when they say that, they probably have something in mind, because a student's requirement, recruitment, because you are a private, public university, but in the private university, I was at George Washington University. My jobs, my existence, including Harvard, is depending on students' tuition or endowment. But if they're not satisfied, they're not going to come to you. So it's more like a market, but that's how it is. So I think what we need to do is take, we need to understand the changes. If these changes require you to change, please do change.
Don't say that, no, I'm a tenured professor. I'm not going to do this. But you do publication because that gives you tenure. But publication of what? On your own field? You want to be famous? How about the students who came to? I'll be happy those days. Oh, I'm very happy. One of my students did very good in the book. So I wanted to show to the world what I care. By thinking who I support, they become something. That is my pleasure, honestly. If one of you today hearing me, and later on, I think he mentioned uh, Gabriel, uh, Gilbert. 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 He mentioned that, when did you use the book? You used my book, you said? Well, when was it? 2004. Oh, so see, that made me happy. It means all across the world, I hear it, that they said, oh, you used your book. And this person came from Estonia. He says that, yeah, he went to University of Twente, Netherlands. He used my book there. I was very happy. The hard professor, his professor was Dr. Betty Collis, who was working with me, and but she passed away. So that makes me happy. I wanted to, today, what I say, tomorrow, you face situation and you make yourself prepared, you'll be the happiest person. Now, if you want to stay the way you are, nobody's bothering you. But know that the changes happen, not because of COVID. As a professor, we need to create the learner focus, learning centered instructional. And learner, and I could not say core customer, but I would say that they are the one we are here in the business. We all love profession as a professor or teacher because you love the learning. You love to have, otherwise there's so many other jobs for you. You can take it, be happy, right? Ethical consideration. Ethical consideration, for example, today I'm here uh, at uh, two o'clock or three o'clock, it's probably five hours early in USA. So think about, I was at Washington DC teaching a course, eight in the morning. I want my students to be together with chat with me. You know, Washington DC is in the United States. United States has six time zones. So if I'm doing eight o'clock uh, teaching, and you think a student's in Hawaii, she's gonna wake up and she wanna chat with me because she, she'll be asleep, right? So ethically, it's a geographical diversity. Please be sensitive. Now you're thinking, no, no, I only teach people in uh, maybe Porto or Lisbon in my area. No, you are teaching them now because the potential is there that you will be teaching students in Nepal. You will be teaching students in Mozambique. So you need to think about this. That is ethically, geographical diversity. Think about learner diversity. All the students are same? No, some students are visual learners, some are audio learner. How about the copyright issues? These ethical issues. The students, they're gonna submit the paper to you. How do you know? He has done the work or show them appropriate copyright, you know, intellectual property rights. So these are, you never had to think about this thing when you were in traditional school. So you have to do now. Then ethical consideration, I can write a book on ethical consideration. There are, for example, controversial issues. The controversial issue, for example, right now, Ukraine war is going on. Now, why the war has started is a very controversial issue. Russians author would write one way, Ukrainian authors write one other way, another author maybe write another way. So you need to start thinking about that my students, what they should learn. For any controversial issue, you may want to show the multiple perspectives. So your Russian professor, there is Ukrainian professor, yes, maybe Turkish professor, see what they say. So ethically, you need to prepare yourself to bring where it's needed. You cannot take your position. You let the multiple perspectives to the students. Let the student decide. You can have comments. 
you can have bias that's fine but this is how it is then come institutional dimension that deals with academic affairs student services administrative affairs so students will say that okay i come to university here at Vario and i want to uh, i use my library because you pay the tuition and when i'm taking this class completely online and then what happens will i have library of, uh, access to like a digital library because he she or he pay the tuition so universities who are venturing into this digital transformation they need to provide the students what they need because others are do so this is a challenge my friend my good friend who is taking me well dina you raise your hand please say everyone knows her she is in library science she was talking to open education resources you have to have those because that's how the students learners will use them for their improvement so you see to this talk i try to say what the students need and i try to give you some guidance so based on this guidance you can design you please go on so this inner octagonal is called characteristics that I showed. And the next, and these are the eight guidelines. Simple, but it's been since 1996, I've been working on these ideas, you know. So thank God, I feel that I may be getting close to understanding, but it's still, I it's still need to learn. Go on. So with this model, I said, okay, now blended learning. Do you have any questions so far? Any, if you have any questions, go on. I'll, I'll finish it in a few minutes. Yes, maybe, maybe one. Okay. Um, you, you showed us those eight characteristics and those eight guidelines. Yeah. Um, but I don't see there's a direct relationship between each characteristic and the guideline. Yeah, but there, no. You're correct or you're not correct also. Okay. Okay. The, they are not, they are systemic nature, meaning this, if it is cost effective, uh, they want, but it's not interactive. So it doesn't matter, they will not take it. So they have a symbiotic systemic interdependence. If you want to have like a engaging, how can you make it engaging if it's not single objective focused? If it's not, see, you have only can you be engaged because I said, okay, today I'm going to talk to you about, I seen a big lake and this is, I saw this. And so I have one objective. So if I don't have a single objective, then I can make it interactive. So they're inter interrelated. No, no, no. Which subject you are in? Because the, okay, which, which subject you are in? The way you presented those. Yeah, no, it's very good thing. It. See, I'm learning from you. What subject you are in? What do you teach? Uh, programming mostly. See, yeah. I knew that. The reason is, you know, <laughs> yeah. Okay, who else? Uh, which subject you are in? Environment. Huh? Environment. Oh, we need to have it. Which subject you are in? Yeah. Mathematics. Okay, you? Mathematics. You? Communication. I know you. So you. And what? Huh? Education. Huh? Technician. Very good. Technician. Accounting. CCs. Hmm? Technicians. Technicians. Education. Library science. Engineering. Oh, in education, but answer. So you see. Those of you who are in the field of very hard sciences, pragmatic, they always try to see one, because they're programming, if you don't do this, it's not gonna work. We are in education, blah, blah, blah. We talk a lot, but no, but you cannot do that. You know, you, what you do that program not gonna work. So yeah, so you see, even we as a human, 
I like I'm talking all this time because I don't have a job really that I report to. If I can say the university will go away, nobody can go and get me fired, right? So, so I can say it. So you folks, some of you, I hope <laughs> nobody listening, maybe somebody has a job for me and needs no longer give it to me. So what happens? We as what we are, our thinking, the way how we struggle every day in our teaching. But one thing you have to remember, like uh, robots, rob robotics can do the surgery, but he is not, he doesn't have a heart. He doesn't have a touch of human. So on the top of everything, you need to see the human interaction, human touch to it. That is the most important. If you don't have a human touch, you're not gonna go further. Really, suppose I was in my television show, I have one television show in DC, so one of the doctors, she's a neurosurgeon. So she was asked, I was asking her that, uh, she said, well, I said, in neurology, can you still use the, any robotics? And so? so we can, but we need to be there. That means, you will be surprised, you know, I'm wearing braces in my, because I broke my knee playing soccer, not like your famous Ronaldo, but I did on the, I played the left, left wing, I bled the book the guy, was, so I'm good. So, good in that, and I both knees, I'm wearing the braces because I broke it. So what I mean, I have so many surgeries in my life. My, someone throw me the ball, if you see it, I get a TMJ, you know? So I broke this soccer, basketball. I have a, I did something and I hurt my, you know, right shoulder, so I had so many surgeries. So my wife, she always says that, that next time she has to buy body parts from me from the internet because I, I'm totally broken. So I said that if I have to go for surgery, I don't believe in robots to do the surgery. I need a human because I know what it takes. Someone has to make me feel good. So I know your question generated this, but it is true that in the real world, in some field, you'll be questioning it. But whole idea is this, you put the learner at the center and ask them what they need and design it which is appropriate for you. Now, we'll talk about that. My, this managing learning book has been translated into 23 languages. You know, as, uh, we'll talk about that, you know, Portuguese ones coming. My problem is this, they didn't ask me that much question. People in Uzbekistan asked me so many questions about the same model. It's to, uh, uh, in the Vietnamese version, asked me a different kind of question. I never encountered this thing. That means the model is there, the octagon, but it's like a glass of water. You put this water in a different, it takes the shape. Because they're asking this question because of the infrastructure. Like the US have a lot of, uh, you know, software. But in some other countries, they don't have the software. So they probably use the Moodle for learning management system, open source. So you see, when they're writing, translating the book, the option of changes according to their own infrastructure. Their pedagogy philosophy is different than ours. In Africa, they like the oral tradition, you know? In other places, we like the abstract. So you need to be cross-cultural. You cannot think yourself always. You have to think about other people to survive. So I find it out in the translating, translator asked me a question. In Uzbekistan, the guy was doing it. He also got my Russian translation book, so I understand. Then he asked the question. I have eight dimensions here. He said, what are the dimensions? I said, I don't know what dimension. So I said, is all category help? And yeah, then I said, okay, put categories. But his, to him, the dimension is something else. Maybe something is spiritual, I don't know. So, so you see, now all this I said, you see, I created a framework, a comprehensive approach for the blended learning. In the new normal, in the new normal, I used, I used to say to Anna, Dina, and Je, about that you guys are normal, normal people. And I observed them, yeah, they, they, 
they're normal, you know, they take care of me. Then I called them, you guys said, new normal. And their conference themes was new normal. So in the new normal, you need to use the blending. Whatever you have, which is, works good at the classroom, use it. If it's good at online, use it. But you need to test it out. You cannot force that you do use online, you do face-to-face. -face. No, how you decide. To, de to make a decision, you need to go to Bloom's taxonomy. A Bloom's taxonomy, Bloom's from University of Chicago many years ago, he showed us the way. He didn't know it's gonna be like, it's gonna be like online, because Bloom's passed through many years ago. There was no internet. So he says, I studied his framework and I came up with, if any objectives that you have, remember the objectives, if it, they are low cognitive level, like a knowledge level, comprehension level, they are very good for online. Any objectives, lower cognitive level, like comprehension, uh, application, uh, so these are, they will be very good for asynchronous learning. But if the content is high cognitive level, hands-on, you need synchronous, like classroom. You follow me? So you can right away make a decision that, okay, this thing I can do online, but don't, for, don't force fit. And also try out the students, well, I want to do this online. Let's try. If, if they like it, just go and do it. So with this, you can decide which content objectives can go live in the classroom or which can go online. Now, some people are saying, well, technology is so good that it can do handle the synchronous and asynchronous, means live or non-live. If it is, use it. But ultimately, what I showed you here, you have an option of actually looking into your objectives in your course and make a decision how you want to go. Before we didn't have, we just put everything online, fails. But here, we're going to just stop and think. So here, this online, online, this is face to face. Now, this model that I just showed you, it will give you understanding the, what they need and their guidelines. And then I have another model called P3, Hans P3. P means people, process, product. When I created this, uh, I was thinking in instruction design, have an AD model. My one is like simple. It's like a parity type here, which is like, first of all, you need to see what are you doing? Who are the people? What are you doing? What do you produce? Suppose if I hire people to do a course, I will ask them, first they have to do the content preparation, they have to do an analysis. So if they do the analysis, they do the project plan. I will ask them, after doing an analysis, give me the project plan. So I will make you accountable, but what are you doing? I am doing a video production, so show me the product. People, who are you? I am a videographer. Process, what do you do? I'm making a video. Product, I will have an instructional video. So these are the common sense thinking. You, whoever you employ, who you work with, always tell them that, you know, who are you, what you do, and what you produce. Now, after all this, you will ask the question, how we do the assessment learning? You cannot do the testing just like you do in a classroom. So for that reason, I said physical, physical classroom or digital. You can have your student come into the classroom, you can take them test. You can do them virtual. They can do virtually. Or if it's hands-on, they go to the lab, show they are doing it. Or if it's too complicated, put the, you know, uh, a video camera. Suppose someone is learning about uh, making salt. I see this, they're making salt. Somebody learn how to make the salt out of the ocean water. 
So put that camera on, and he shows what he has done, how he's evaporated. We can show, see it through the video. So it's all about testing most meaningfully, either through online or using the video method, but you have to do it. Do I make sense to you on this? Oh, can you click? So that's what I talk about. Okay, click. Okay. Now, next. Oh my gosh, it's going to be lazy. Okay. When I talk about these other issues, you know, all the dimensions, sub dimensions. Now, click on it. Metaverse. You see metaverse? Okay, I'm writing a book on metaverse. How many of you are familiar with metaverse? Hmm? Okay. So, metaverse is like, in the US is becoming a big thing because people want to do the virtual reality and all this big money there. So Metaverse book I'm writing, uh, it is, uh, I'm challenging more than I'm writing. Click on it, please. So is this innovation, is the new normal learning? Metaverse is gonna be one important part. Uh, click. Okay, use the Time Magazine has a special issue on metaverse. So that means we cannot lag behind not doing it. Go on. So I believe, and this gentleman who's writing a book with me, he believes my framework is appropriate for metaverse. So you're writing a book, go on, go on. So what I'm gonna talk about metaverse, click on it please. I'm gonna challenge the metaverse, how about the bandwidth? In my framework, infrastructure, you see, one of the issues in here is called metaverse. There's infrastructure issues. I'm going to ask the question. You asking about the metaverse, how people were using it. Do you have enough bandwidth? You see page and site design? Cross-cultural communication issues, signs and symbols I talked about. Because you have an avatar, right? Some avatar you know, maybe religiously or culturally not appropriate. So you need to think about this. Learner diversity, how do you trust? How do you develop trust in metaverse? It's like a, talking to like a, a, a avatar. How about the digital divide? Metaverse need goggles need high bandwidth and you have people oh thank you so much you may god bless you <laughs> so metaverse need a lot of preparation you be surprised in the united states when the COVID started uh students were flat-footed stay home they're taking classes and there are poor families they suffer the most you know why they live in a one apartment building apartment mostly a bilingual one and they have three children go go to school so but each one needs an independent room and they to participate in online but three of they have only one computer they could not do it all at the same time these bilingual parents don't really speak english that much for example so teachers, uh, but uh, this online in lower level record help for the parents. Parents don't understand English, how they can help the kids. So you see, so I believe that in metaverse, you need goggles, high speed computer, how you gonna solve this? So before you get into this metaverse, know that you have equal rights, equal opportunity for all the learners. Cyber security. With your metaverse, you have privacy issue, avatar, characteristics, all this you need to pay attention to. You see, more time in a virtual world requires balance with real one, balance that might be easily achieved. For example, if you do in a class, you can, I know I can monitor you. So online and a metaverse, you're talking to avatars. Can you control how much opportunity you have to have managed this thing? 
So it is important for us to pay more attention that we should not get too excited or certain things. Because technology is the sidekick, pedagogy is the main thing. Pedagogy will guide to the technology will work. So don't get too excited, but challenge it. That's the book I'm gonna write on the challenge. They're gonna hit me more about metaverse because I don't write for the technology. If technology is good, I'll show. But I, myself, as a learner, I face a lot of problems. So my question is, will I be able to be successful in teaching metaverse or help creating metaverse if these are the issues come? Because I have been back in my mind. Remember, I sent my student of Amazon Forest whether they can participate in online. Online, I have so much came. Now the metaverse is going to be more difficult. Also, it's going to cost money, development cost. We'll be able to do it. Okay. During my survey of talking to many students from kindergarten to college kids, one student from Pennsylvania, young lady, she's in 11th grade. She says she likes, and she happens to my, uh, one of the professors I hired, his uh, daughter, he says that, she says that she likes online. However, she misses the class. After, during the class, she stopped by and during lunch time we talked to Cynthia and all that, she misses that. So that created, every single student, this created a mental stress. So mental health becomes an issue. You'll see many organizations these days, they are thinking of the mental health counselor for the students. Participate in online, they are so used to go to the first class and see the professor. Now, they don't see the professor, the professor only text them. It also creates some uh, situation, and situation is not very healthy. So mental health is one thing we have to pay attention to. When it comes to metaverse, it's going to be different too. And I say that how you control all these people online? Moderating will be good. Very difficult. See, I am promoting this and I am also challenging it. That's what we're going to do. Scene of commission and scene of omission. Scene of commission means something you put in your design, it did not work. Scene of omission means something you supposed to put, you didn't put it, it did not work. So always think about what works, what doesn't work. Continue. So here is the book that I'm working with. A uh, book, uh, and uh, Anna, you will sit. Go on, please. It will be me with Jason um, Anthony, and uh, he's doing more, the, more of the work, and I'm guiding. So this book will be, we didn't select any uh, publisher yet, because we want to bank on this book. We want to make some money, because by challenging. So we not, did not go into the big publication yet, but we have a website. We wanted to hear people what they say. In the corporate world, it, military, NATO, you know, they're very interested in this metaverse. So I wanted to make a, make a fighting, educational fighting with, training fighting with all these people, so that if it metaverse good or bad, let's have a discussion. Because technology companies, like this guy came from UNESCO, uh, Mark was saying, technology always try to put the technology. They have, uh, you know, uh, some of the open source uh, courses, MOOCs, and all this, they build a company, make money. There's no democracy because a technology company is always trying to get money out of is possible. So that's why my challenge, I'm, I'm, my mom is an educator. I'm really a very, very nice guy when it comes to, you know, give hard time to the tough guys. In my writing, I do that. I challenge globally. So the, my challenge is to them, Corporations will come and say, we're going to do the metaverse because there are big money in it. You know, in Facebook, it says uh, metaverse may be virtual, but impact would be real. This is the slogan. So they, the whole Facebook, they named the change to meta. OK, so my position is that fine. If it's good, we'll use it, but give us a chance to debate. They bring it to Congress, give it Republican, Democrat, and say that it's good or bad, 
come up with what is good for us. Because I, we don't want to jump into this thing until, unless I see, as an educator, it is going to work for my students. Go on. Okay, this is a good news for Portugal. You don't think so? Your English book, my English book will be in Portuguese language. And our very own Ana Loreiro, she is right there. And we have Enes Nuno, and there's a designer who, who did that. And um, this book is going to be ready sometime in the near future, whenever it's ready. We'll make it uh, available to people. So um, based on, you know, it should be done based on uh, what is good for population here. Now, also language versions since Brazil, Mozambique, and other countries, you need to think about their infrastructure, their pedagogical philosophy, you know, how they work. And, okay, go on. Okay, on this, there's a position paper. Okay, if you go badulkhan.com, that's my site. New desk normal, no, go back to this. Okay, this paper you can download, only five pages. I talk about what I talk about today. I talk about metaverse and Okay, before I do that, I'm going to, uh, your vice director, she, I'm going to give her a magazine, and so we'll take a picture, and I put it on the Facebook, so I gave something. But I didn't bring anything for my friends here, yes. there, but we'll give you maybe when the book, this, I'm going to Bangladesh, right? When this done, maybe I'll give you a book in Lisbon when you come. Okay, so you please come, and when she comes, would you all please join us in the back? Oh, she give me some. Oh, this is good. Do you have a T-shirt? Oh, I'll wear this T-shirt. Okay, I'll wear the T-shirt too. Please come, uh, uh, everyone. You come. Everyone. You come. You, you come. Um, do, do this. Can you turn it over this way? And uh, make sure book doesn't drop. Good job. Okay. Okay. Then, so all of us, all of you, come, please. I remember all of you, because when you become rich, please buy me lunch, because I'm going to be out of the money anyway. Please, everybody comes. Come, come on, Anna. You thinking we'll be taking the picture? Okay, that's. Yes. Okay, please come. Yeah, first of all, first line there. Yeah, line there. Okay. Now, why is she so nice to take picture? You need to be included to come. Come, come. Okay, first, okay, yeah. I'm gonna give this book you you know, those, you know? First you take one, then you do a selfie. Make sure books come and the back, uh, you know. Yeah, now you're the leader, hold on. These young people know how to work. Yeah, they do. Okay, hold on, hey, you stay there. But I don't trust you if you're going to give this to me, but I have my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> I lost many of the people. Uh, there you go, take this. Okay. So the selfie and the regular. Unique. Unique. Unique, that's my thing. Uniqueness is you. Yeah. Yeah, so take, yeah. If whatever you can capture is fine, but make sure this we are here. And now you do your one. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, now thank this, you. thank you, appreciate it. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. I, you, you gave me some, I'm going to take a picture. Oh, yeah, I'll give the chance because let me wear your t shirt. So I'll take a picture of the t shirt too. Oh, do you want the t shirt? Yeah, because. Can we close the door first now? Uh, yeah, they, if they not, they want to ask question, it's fine. Yes. No, let's go. There you go. You like it? Oh, beautiful. Okay. You should, uh, you know, take a, do a video on this, please. Uh, here. Yeah, you come. Uh, uh, okay. Hey, I'm not a very selfish guy. She, she feed me a good lunch, you know. So I did. One for uh, technology central, and now one for 
Oh. Hold on. No, no, it's not okay because I need. This is the form. It's working. It's still working. Okay. They look great. That's the suit. Okay. That's the poster boy. We. Okay, folks. Those of you who are. I'm crazy. Thank you. <laughs> this is a gift that I received from uh, university uh, here at uh, Avai, Avai, Av okay. Avai, Avai, Avai. So this is the one I got it from Avai. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll give you a chance to question. If you have any, I'll answer. And so, ta-da. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'll take the questions. Thank you. No, no, thank you. Appreciate it. We have no question. That means. Oh, that's why they're not asking. Okay. No, no, if you do have any questions, you can think through. It's fine. If you don't have any question, it's fine too. But uh, my site is badrulkhan.com. And the paper is badulkhan.com slash new underscore normal.pdf. This is a good paper to read if you want to. Yeah. Okay, one thing I want to do is that we, I do have a, a television show. It's called KDW Khan's Digital World on Fox 5 plus Washington, D.C. So I talked to my pub, uh, producer that since I'm touring to Portugal first time, so it will be cons in Portugal. So we're going to have a six, uh, five, six minutes video. So one minute video, I'll go for this. They're going to produce something. And three minutes for ICM, which is the conference I came for. One for one minute, one minute from Porto and Lisbon, the one going. So no, no, so show, is, show is six minutes, six minutes. You know, so no, it's in future maybe. So what will happen is basically I'm very, very pleased with Portugal. Uh, and uh, I think you have a lot of potentials and any collaboration we can do. For me, collaboration is knowledge sharing. Basically, I don't represent any company or any university, but knowledge sharing would be if you'd like to know how we can you know, best help you. If I don't know how to help, but I do have a lot of connections in other professors in the field, in other countries. Okay, in Bangladesh, I'm going with the, uh, with the Ministry of Education. Uh, I serve as the chief advisor. We have 160 million people, a lot of schools. So I'm going to be training the teachers and university professors about the blended learning. So in the blended learning national task force, I'm going to go there. So it's anything that you can, and I would like to see in some countries, and I'm also looking into uh, programs at uh, the university in Portugal, so I yet to see how to engage them with uh, students in other countries. Okay. Next time I'll probably go to Uzbekistan and others where the books are, uh, Vietnam I may go to introduce the book, and Turkey also. So I think it will be a good collaboration. So if I make you very worried today, I cannot make you feel better. I say you, get, you should worry more. What is coming, we don't know. Now it's a metaverse, avatars. These are the new thing, I understand, but don't get too scared because your kids, your grandchildren will not talk to you anymore. He will have an avatar. You have to know that's him. Anyway, any questions from the people online? Don't be too shy. If you don't speak uh, English, it's okay. I, I barely speak English. What can I do? I have no choice. If you can talk to Portuguese, if any ask question, I will answer it. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Well, thank you, folks. Those who are in online, thank you. <laughs>